let me try that and we'll see how it looks, I guess. Yeah, that makes sense. Perfect. And I'm seeing too, as we're on the stream, my Facebook's kind of popped up here saying more of you guys are liking our page. And uh, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Any press is good press. Um, just to get our name out there. And if you guys like our project, please let anyone you know uh, know about it uh, if they're interested in kind of Forex uh, space games. Um, it would just be great. And we're really hoping we can get this project funded with Kickstarter. Uh, we're looking at uh, having that be in uh, late November, um, maybe maybe early December. Um, it just depends where we're at in terms of testing. Because when, when we release a product to you, we want to make sure um, that it is polished and clean and doesn't need a million patches. Or, you know, so many games nowadays need day one patches. Oh yeah, um, <laughs> I'm just thinking about Skyrim now. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's and there's just so many games, um, yeah, uh, that just yeah have just terrible day one patches. Just like, why aren't you just testing? And why is the player the tester? You know. So when we have beta testing, we're gonna bring people in to test you, the community, to test it. But you know, we want feedback. If the game's not right, we're not gonna release it. Um, and that doesn't, that's not to say that's never going to, that it will never come out. Um, but if you guys are giving us a ton of feedback and saying, yes, things work, but all these things don't, we're going to go back and make it right. We're not out there to release a poor game. Um, we want to make sure it's fun for you and fun for us. Um, yeah, and Ace just posted. Um, the, the Facebook link, we posted up higher, but I know we've been on here for, gosh, an hour and a half now. At times it's flown by. Um, <laughs> and as for Mac support, yes, absolutely. Um, I own Macs in my own household as well. I mainly use my Windows PC, um, but I have Mac laptops and iPads and Mac minis, and absolutely. Um, we will have Mac support as well as Linux support. Um that's one of the reasons that we went with the Unity engine for our game, because it is a lot easier to make multi-platform games off of. Yes, uh, Linux as well. So we'll have, we will have all that stuff. Will the major three. Yeah, and, and, and not a ton of people use Linux, but I, I would say this, is that if, for us using Unity, it's not difficult to do. Um, and Linux is a great platform, and I think uh, another thing about the Linux community is that they're very, um, very ex like when when people make products for them, they're loyal and excited, and they're people that truly build a community. That's what we want to do with this game. I would love to see us release this game and people mod it and make total conversion mods and make all sorts of adjustments and changes to it. Um, it would be fantastic. To me, that's just flattery for a good project. So, um, absolutely. The more systems we can have, I mean, that's, you know, you look at some games, I was just reading, um, oh, I forget what game it was. I was reading Rock, Paper, Shotgun and looking at different Kickstarter games, kind of doing research for our, you know, for our project and seeing what other game companies are doing. And, you know, one game said that their minimum requirements was it were uh, having a quad core processor, and they had to run like at two point two gigahertz. And the video card, I think, at the minimum the minimum requirements were, I, I think it was like last generation's mid range Nvidia and high end ATI cards. And to me, that's just the complete opposite approach. I guess I have to gaming. You can make games look good and still not destroy your computer, you know, trying to enjoy them and trying to play them. Um, so we're, we're really trying to um, get it to work, you know, our game to look good, but to run on everything. And so far, I think we've been able to do that. I mean, everything is just very snappy, very fast. And we are uh, constantly going back and optimizing code. Um, and Tuxnet and uh, VU Legends have been working on that, and it's amazing. As fast as things were in the beginning, 
Um, they're even faster now, especially like Galaxy Generation. It's almost instantaneous now. Jumping in and out of systems, instantaneous, you know. Um, in terms of making it an iOS game, you know, I would be tempted to try it. I, I Our main concern right at this moment is just releasing for the big three platforms. So PC, uh, OS X, and Linux. You know, I have an iPad in the home. You can add a module in Unity that will let you run um, or let you convert everything over to iOS. I think it'd be a great market for us to look at, but... I want to play test it significantly first to make sure that everything works with that interface type. Um, because some of the stuff, like, for instance, uh, Tuxnet has the Galaxy loaded up right now. You know, as you zoom into it, it's easier to point out stars, but it would be really difficult to point out stars right now. So we would need to, to um, be, and, and you can, of course, select the stars because they're so tightly packed together. It'd be difficult for your finger to hit individual things. So I, ideally, I think we could do a Master of Orion for um, iOS and Android. Um, and, and also, I, I don't want to forget Windows uh, phones. Or the, or, or it's not called Windows phone. Not, not just called Windows Mobile or Windows now. Um, because I use Windows phone myself, and I, I love it. I think I'm part of the 2.5% market share that it has. But, um, <laughs> you know, I... You know, I, I want to make sure that it's it's out there for everyone. And um, if we did do something, it would be some sort of a scaled down version. Um, and, I, and I don't think it would take us a ton of time to convert because Unity is so modular and it's able to. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, getting there. you're getting closer. You're getting close. Um, and then uh, <laughs> let's see. And, um, you know, and uh, you know, definitely in terms of, yeah, realism, I totally agree. There's just games that just decimate systems now. And that kind of seems to be the benchmark of a good game. And I, I think that's really unfortunate. Um, is that so many games out there now, they lack content and they've just become, how hard can I run your graphics and CPU? And please be sure that you have 16 gigabytes of memory. Cause if you don't, you can't play me, you know, that's not to me a sign of a good game. A sign of a good game is, you know, there are games like civilization where you sit down and all of a sudden it's five hours later and you're like, Oh, where did the time go? Or games that, you know, like Civ where I know for me personally, I try not to play Civ on a weeknight. Cause if not, I'll stay up way too late and, I, and I won't realize it because you just want to keep going one more turn, but one more turn leads to another turn. Um, and I didn't realize cube that, uh, uh, Ubuntu had a, a mobile OS platform. I did not realize that. And I'd be curious, uh, you know, it's something we can look at down the road when we look at mobile platforms, you know, that's something, Obviously, down the road, we're going to focus more right now on the main three platforms. But, you know, I have no problem with releasing the game to as many platforms as possible, especially with Unity. It's so modular. It's one yeah. of the main reasons that, that we went that direction um, is because it's, yeah, as you can see here. So it looks like at the minimum, I see Windows, I see Windows Phone, I see Android and iOS and Blackberry, which I think potentially has an even smaller market share than Windows Phone has, mm -hmm. which is pretty impressive. Um, but yeah, I mean, it would be great to release it on those on those platforms. You know, my my main concern um, would be again: Are we making the game good on those platforms, or just doing a crappy port? Um, because I, I want. I want a good game. I, I love to make money off of those platforms, but I, I want a good game to be released. That's our first and foremost important thing. I know that Vu was pretty interested in... Uh, <laughs> he wanted to do, like, PS Vita because then he'd had a ex excuse to buy one. <laughs> so. Yes, yeah, I remember. Yeah, he was saying, oh, yeah, I gotta do PS Vita. Yeah, <laughs> I remember saying that a few weeks ago. 
Yeah, and you know, honestly, I, I think a lot. I, I think, especially in terms of the touch-based devices, so Windows Phone, iOS, and um, Android, it should be really fast for us to convert things over because it's a matter of build, just simply making another build. But I think the other thing too is it, it would probably run even better on those devices because we actually, I wouldn't have like a thousand twenty four star game on a tablet. I'd scale it down a little bit, mm-hmm. um, but I think it would work very well. Um, it would just be a matter of just us thinking about some different uh, design uh, parameters for a mobile device versus a desktop computer. But I think that's more than doable um, down the road, of course. Because right now we, we we have to get this game out of alpha and into beta and something that you guys can start playing with uh, and enjoying. And I'll definitely, I think someone posted on here too about trying to post more pics on Facebook. Yeah, uh, Morvalin, and you know, I definitely will. I've been I've been a little slow to post stuff because we only have so many mockups and stuff like that, and I don't want to. I don't want to, I guess, burn everyone out, you know, throw everything out there and be like, oh, look, here's this, Im- here's all of our images, and then we're done posting stuff. Um, and so, because, like, one of the things I don't like about Facebook is when it comes to companies advertising is, like, they'll repost the same old images again and again and again. It's, it kind of turns out to be, like, spam. And so I want, ooh, sorry, guys, but that looks like a pretty good spiral. What do you guys think? But I, th- I think, I think we have a spiral galaxy. Yeah. And yes, we will have devlogs. Yeah, we're uh, looking at doing those, and I guess streaming a development is kind of like that. But of course, we want to like write, you know, articles. Um, you know, maybe little bugs we had uh, implementation of stuff. You know, all that sort of stuff. For the yeah, we can side, at least. At- yeah, do you want to zoom in here, text it for Adam to, to show off the nebula? Sure. Show off the pretty. <laughs> Uh-oh. We, we have disapproval. We, we need more stars on the rings. Okay, more stars on rings it is. Or not, not the rings, but the arms. But yes, there's a nebula. Yeah. But I, I, I it think definitely, it's kind it definitely of... definitely seems like it's... Yeah. It seems like it really is packing them harder in the middle because you can see it's hitting that consistent pattern where the game is just like, no, I have to pack it like this in order to fit the number of stars mm-hmm. in, in that small area. Where it gets more natural looking the further out you go. Yep. I have a feeling I'm going to use a day or two on this actually to get it just right. It just right. Once we get the the numbers, just let me know, and I can start working on a JSON file for them. That yeah. way, it just calls those numbers, and then that's no problem. That should be a really easy JSON file to write. You know, I should stream writing a JSON file. That way, people can see the monotony of it, just how <laughs> boring it is to. Even when you're copying and pasting data and just adjusting for each type. Oh, it is boring. It's like writing math tables all day. It's just not fun. I think it's Ace's way of getting back at me because Ace was kind enough to write up um, all of our uh, all of our design doc and all the tables in it. But I've I've taken on kind of taking those word tables and then converting them into JSON, which lets our game uh, read off of it. Hey, it's Autogram. One of our one of our uh, our three D modelers is on here, which is great. Whoa! Whoa. I'm gonna mod him. <laughs> Careful with your powers now. Careful. Yeah, and more than you know, I think what I'll do is we have a few mockups now. Um, maybe later today I'll go ahead, I'll, I'll post some of that up, um, just like a main menu and just some of our renders. You know, problem too is, is some of our renders, uh, I was talking about earlier, you know, about getting system view to work. We had some great mock-ups. It looked fantastic. And then they looked really good in 2D, but then we got then we them into Unity and it's like, and it's like, we're in a 3D space and this doesn't quite work out so great in a 3D space. So we had to go back and I think 
we're at like the fourth revision, but I think we finally have it knocked out. We're just need to just fine tune everything now. I just love the rebel just... stuff. <laughs> it's back. It's yeah. Back. <laughs> 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 or it kind of reminds me of the Firefox logo a little bit, or it's got that that you know, the fox are going around. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I think I've got an idea now, actually. Uh, uh oh, Firefox. <laughs> uh, what we could do is to just remove the rebel icon, is take all the stars in the middle, like the core, and just um, space them out so they fill up the core. Can you repeat that? Sorry, I was, I was reading our, our great comments here that we're having. I just did terrible. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, of course. I, I'm I'm just thinking we could just take all the stars in the middle and just um space them out to fill up the core, I guess. Yeah. I'm not sure. Hmm. But I think that if we choose less arms for the generator, we will have a better dis distribution. Let me just test that. Do like okay. two. Oh yeah, I'm quite happy with this stream. We're having like 16, 17 viewers. That's great. Yeah, this is definitely a, a new peak for us. We were at 17, we're down to 16 now, but you know, I get people can't be here all day watching us on the internet stream. <laughs> <laughs> you have lives, go figure. Ooh, this is a new one. Looks like some yin yang, yin yang stuff. <laughs> In Morland, you're, you're, yeah, you're absolutely right. Oh. Whoa! Yeah, that looks interesting. I I'm gonna uh, name this galaxy the Serpentine or something. I don't know. <laughs> and yeah, you know, we'll work on trying to get kind of more of a, a Facebook presence. I think we just launched our site. What was it like Wednesday night or something like that? I've been super busy with work, working overtime, um, so I didn't have time to get on there and post as much as I'd like to. But um, we'll certainly start look. We'll start you know kind of getting more stuff up there to kind of give you guys an idea of what we're what we're about. <laughs> yes, Larkin, indeed. Oh. Actually, one of the things I'll do too is I'll see if there's any kind of tactical shots or things that, um, you know, one thing we could post too is our mock up for system view since you guys have kind of got to see what it looks like, but. This will be kind of what the final product looks like um, once we get everything implemented. Um, can I upload on here? Can it? Will it let me? Oh, no. I think you need to upload I need to, it I, somewhere I, on the yeah, link. I need, I, yeah, I need to host it first. Yeah, yeah. I just tried it. All of a sudden, it's like, see, desktop, da, da, da. It's like, nope, that's not what I want. Oh, I just realized I just did too. I also just kicked myself out of the chat. That's even better. Get back here on Hitbox. Oh yeah, Imgur. Mm. Mm. Yes, I'll have to use Imgur. I've never used it before. See, all this social media stuff, I'm, I'm not a huge, huge guy for it. But I will certainly figure it out here as we get along. In fact, my, my wife helped me set up our, our Twitter account because I've never used Twitter myself. Uh... Let's see, upload images. I think system view is this one, right? Yep. Let's see here.
Ooh, we have an image on Imager. It's incredible. It blows my mind. Ooh. That was actually surprisingly easy to use. You just upload it? Yeah. It's oh. like really easy to use. But, oh, there, okay, there you are. Perfect. Like, I was planning on moving over to Tactical, like, in a couple of, in a week or two. But, to be honest, I don't think I'm going to finish this before the Kickstarter. Or, well, I will, but I need to devote all my time on it. That, yeah, and that's fine. And I think Vu uh, is getting close enough with System View that it, for, at this point, it's just under him just tweaking the UI elements yeah. to make it match our, our mock up. And I think it'll be good. And I'll do all the generation stuff, I guess. Yeah, that'll be your baby. And a yeah. big baby at that. <laughs> we, we, we could do that. Actually. <laughs> Actually, I, I, I believe on our forums we do have some dudes of, uh, of contracts full body. Or is it just the head? Oh, it's just the head. We don't we don't have full body nudes. We we do we do have a full body nude of an old Catraxi design that we had, but it's not it's not the great one that Raven's done for us now. So I'm not going to post it. But yeah, we don't have any nude aliens on on our forums just yet. Someone may go for it here, yes. Yes, they have, I think Centauri have, what is it, uh, eight? I, I, th I want to say it's like six or eight, because at some point Londo cracks a joke to Jakar about, you know, going eight rounds or something like that during sex, that, yeah, that, that, that they, they can take the females there. Yeah, I'll have to go look it up now. Now I'm curious. I'm sure there has to be some sort of Babylon 5 wiki that has this information. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I was uh, watching the uh, event from Apple the other day. And I actually think the Apple Pay is going to be fairly secure because um, they're not going to like keep any vital information about your credit card. Like, you know, number, uh, stuff like that. So, in my eyes, it should I'll be pretty secure, but, you know. Yeah, hopefully. And, and I think they'll definitely be working harder on it now since they've had such bad PR over the celebrity, you know, instances. Oh, yeah. Also, according to the internet, it is six. Centauri has six tentacles. Ooh. Actually, since we're not working on it today, but I, I know it'll be here in the future, I believe my desktop I have some shots of um, tactical. That would probably be good to show you guys. Actually, I'll show you too one of our <laughs> one of our prior ideas for for tactical, or not for tactical, but for um, for making sure that system view is supposed to work. So you guys, the first link you guys have is. Um, one of our more, you know, it's our current iteration of it, but I'll show you what our original looked like. And all these images, all these mockups are done by Ace, who does just fantastic work. Um, but I'll show you. This is why things can can, can take potentially a very long time. Um, <laughs> no, you should. It's just in, it's just Centauri tentacles. You know, there's pieces of excess. That's okay. Oh, Acurus, you need to remember the three W's in the links, I guess. Oh, oh, they, oh, they don't. 
It didn't load for me. I know. Really? It loads for me. That's what's so odd. Oh. Actually, I actually click. I actually oh. clicked the link in the chat and it loaded. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh yeah, it does. It just didn't load in the chat. I guess not for me at least. Could on you know oh, okay. could be me. I guess. Oh, okay. So you need to include .png, and it should work. Oh, really? Because that's so weird. Because mine just works like a web page. Yeah, but if it you include to... .png, it'll load up in chat. Ah, okay. Gotcha. Okay, pretty picture. Well, there you go. Pretty picture. Oh, yeah. There were so many problems when working in 3D with that with those labels oh, yeah so as you guys can see it's a great design it's very simple gives you very basic data so one of the ultimate follies of this design though was imagine rotating around in system view in 360 degrees and how you try to pull this data without the cameras flopping around and overlapping as you rotate, right? Because some of those plant boxes, they're going to start overlapping on each other. And it just got so complicated, especially in some star systems where there are 10 orbits. It just gets to be way too much. Yes, and there is SETI Alpha 5, which, yep. But the only problem with it, though, is Ace, is that it, it's, it's, I think that's an ocean, no, it's a Terran world. It looks like a ocean. And, Oh, no, it, it's uh, Terran. Yeah, it's Terran. It, yeah, it's Terran, or it's maybe it's a Gaia, because I know the Gaia has more water on it than than um, than land. But, um, yeah, like, it just ended up being, like, so cumbersome. And I felt really bad, because uh, I know some of you guys have been watching VU Legends on his uh, development stream, and it was just absolutely terrible for him to get stuff to implement to begin with. And then for us to go through like, nope, this doesn't work. You know, we tried so many different ways to make things work. And ultimately it just, we just kind to completely ditch it. And I know Adam and I talked repeatedly about different designs and different ways to try to salvage this thing and make it work. And ultimately we had to go for just a very simple solution, but it's a lot more robust um, and it's not going to, clog your screen so if you look at the one up above you know you can see it's just very simple um and actually even the box in the prior image it will um link it'll or it'll fade in and out so as you rotate again like essentially that data you'll hover over the planet it'll fade in the data for the city or says city two human and then the planet, the orbits will quit rotating when you hover. Then when you move your mouse off the planet, the box will fade out, but the planets will orbit again, and you'll kind of have this free control like you had before. Um, but it was really tough to do with the boxes because you had so many objects that took so much uh, screen space up. Even on my monitor, um, which is like a 23-inch monitor that, that does 1920 by 1080, it was pretty much eating up most of my real estate on my screen to have all the boxes up. And not everyone runs 1080p. So if you're like on a, you know, on a 720 monitor or something like that, it just, it, it's just too cumbersome. It covers up too much screen and it really detracts from the simple UI um, that Ace and I have developed, um, which is based on 2001 A Space Odyssey and uh, the Wrath of Con, Star Trek, the Wrath of Khan, um, interface for the computers um all these buttons are are were all built by ace who did a great job on them try to see too since you guys are on we got so many different images too for I'll show you guys some more images that we have of stuff because we've got a whole whole wealth of 2D images. If you guys are on here, you guys can see some cool stuff. <laughs> he 
You know, Larrakut, if, if it does, it's purely by randomness, because it's, it's literally all being randomly die-rolled. Um, actually, no, in this case, Ace made this, so maybe he did it on purpose. I would say, if that were an in-game shot, it's completely random, but this one's generated. <laughs> and no, we do not have a Steam group. I, actually, that's something I, did, I, I, I we haven't really gotten on with a Steam presence yet um, because of the green light thing. Like I, I kind of want to wait to see what green light does and then try to roll out that way. Or as we get closer to our Kickstarter, then just, just go for that um, and just force ourselves to go for green light. But I, I want to give it a few more weeks to see if they do something. Um, but if not, we'll definitely get a green light presence. Um, I'll, I'll pay the fee. We'll get stuff posted, but you know, I really one of the one of the main things that we're doing. And I I felt really hesitant to even start a Facebook page and get things going. Is um, I think a lot of indie games like they want to do the easy part first, right? They want to just get out there and say like, um, oh hey, you know, like we we have this idea for a game and it's gonna be the best game ever, but then they kind of have like nothing to show for it. You know, and so I think a lot of times people di are dismissive of indie games because, you know, they're just a lot of words and they don't really show anything. So, you know, we've been working on this for quite a while now and um, Tuxinet and all, all of our team, uh, uh, Andreas that's on here, his his name on our team, uh, he just goes by Odd Grimm. He's He did the human frigate that I posted earlier. Um, you know, they've all done fantastic work. Um, but I wanted to wait for us to kind of have a presence until we had something to show and like, yes, we're serious. And yes, we can put out work that's worthy of, you know, your dollars to support. Um, and so that's kind of been our position from day one. But, um, as late November rolls around, I wanted to start, and I, I wanted to start getting kind of a presence out there. Um, so people knew that, you know, it's not like a last second Kickstarter campaign where all of a sudden people are like, oh, who are you and why should I support your campaign? I wanted to start building a community. Ideally, we were going to have a website up by now, but our, our web developer has just been absolutely swamped lately with real life stuff. But we're hoping next weekend we should have something up um, and going for you guys. Um, but we do have a forum, and I'll post the link here. Um, it's very simple. It's just the basic vanilla forum with some minor modifications. Um, and we have a private developer section on there. But, um, you know, if you, the community, choose to, you know, that that's where you want to converse, you know, we can certainly put more effort into um, more communication through the forum. Right now, the forum mainly is just for on, on the private end. Yeah, and, yeah, Odd Grim. Yep, there it is, our form. <laughs> ever so plain, ever so simple. Um, but ideally, when it's done, uh, one of the reasons we chose Vanilla uh, as a forum uh, software is that it's really easy to make it work on mobile. Um, and on top of that, you can embed it into pages so our theme would stay within the page. Oh, there he is. Yeah, there's Cube. Mm -hmm. Um so we can um, embed it into the page and just make it look like it's all just one big site. Um, so hopefully next week we'll have something to show you guys to uh, to uh, show you that, that we are a serious uh, uh, indie game company. Um, we do have a website, uh, which I will post on here too, but we are Rhombus Studios, um, which if you ask why we're called Rhombus Studios, uh, it's actually a terrible mispronunciation made by someone of our, of, um, Ace and I, we, we share the same last name. Uh, it's just a terrible mispronunciation of our name. And we didn't want to like name our company, just our last name. And it's like, Oh, it's, you know, you know, so-and-so studios, you know, that just seems kind of silly. So this just seemed like something simple. Um, and that's really any game that we're going to make is going to be, I want to say it's a, a, a stupidly simple game, but it's going to be a game that gets back to basic game mechanics that make it fun. And then as many things as we can pile on top of that and fit within that are, is what we're going to do. That's kind of our basic philosophy when we're looking at games. Um, 
is just trying to get back to the basics because so many games, um, and I think uh, some of you some of you pointed out earlier, you know, it's just about graphics and sound and how pretty it looks and how much you can destroy your system and the fact that you need to buy, uh, you know, an, an i core five now because an i three is just you know you can't run it on on dual core. And while um, Tuxnet's actually on that current games page, so our site will have data for uh, or have links for the um, Lord of Rigel project. But as you saw there, it also had information for the uh, link for the Diaspora project, which is where uh, Ace and Newman, and I believe Flipside, all three of them came from that project. Um, and uh, they were they were part of that. They did a ton of work for that. Newman uh, is a professional 3D modeler by trade. Um, he did some fantastic work on this project. So if you kind of want to see the the caliber of prior work that some of the team members here have done, uh, go there. Ogrim has some great models that I think he's posted on the Hardlight production site uh, on their forum. Um, Ogrim's done some fantastic work. Um, and in fact, we've, we've had some uh, game studios interested in our work before, and they've, they've looked at our models, and they're just like, yep, this is you know, studio quality stuff, and that's really what we're shooting for. Um, is to make a game that, yes, it, it's indie because it comes from an, an, indep an independent developer, but not because it's not a AAA quality title. You know, we want this to be uh, a serious contender for you know being one of the best 4X space games out there. I'm trying to see to post some of the images for. Actually, I was thinking, Odgrim, would you mind if I posted some of the art the art concept work for your cruiser? If you're cool with that, I think I'm going to post it here for everyone. They can kind of see. I posted your frigate earlier. Hmm, I'm trying to figure out mm -hmm. why all these stars, like, Wild. you know, mass in the middle and create the rebel icon. You shouldn't be doing that. Yeah. Let's see here. We got the forum here. Later this week, I, I, I think Ace and Ogrim are working on just some little last second details on um, Human Cruiser, so I don't want to post it here yet until it's all really ready for you guys to see but i will post oh i know why it's doing that oh man oh no uh, it's not working you know what it may have to wait till next week actually i'll just well oh yeah um adam i hope I'll, you're I'll talking about hitbox because this is you know what we're doing now <laughs> what's up uh now nah, he wants to make a Twitch icon, but we're using Hitbox, so you know. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, we want we yeah. <laughs> I keep telling Adam too, because you know we used to use Twitch, um, but obviously Hitbox. Oh, I think it's a lot better, and I think Vu and you would agree as well. It's just a lot better. Mm -hmm. um, oh, the cruiser tweaks are done. Well, then I'm gonna go ahead and post those. I'll just post it now. These guys have been great here today, and been a really great audience here for us. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those. I'll get the P3D link for that post so you guys can check out the uh, the uh, ship for that. Rather than showing you just renders of it, I'd rather just show you. Oh, I totally know how to do this now. Well, that's good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, basically, I'm I'm gonna do it like I'm first. I'm gonna generate a cluster galaxy in the middle, like just a small one with I know 100, 200 stars. And then I'll create a spiral galaxy around that. And that should give us the result we want and more tweakable, you know, values for how many stars we want in each arm, stuff like that. Okay, perfect. Just gonna need to refactor some code. It's gonna be fun. Perfect. <sighs>
Oh, awesome. And you guys got the lights tweaked on the bridge finally. Oh, sweet. I look so much better now with the lights being really bright. It looks great. Oh, yeah, I'm excited. That's what happens when you have Steam for about three. Oh, no. it, it It's many years now. I don't know. Sales. <laughs> they have many summer and winter sales, right? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> oh, look. Here's a bunch of games that I don't need for 90% off. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> It's gonna that point for me, like now, you, you, like you see games and like ninety percent, you're like, ah, oh, I need to go buy them, and I'm just like, no, no, I'm not gonna play them. There's so many games I've bought with good intentions to play, and they just sit there, <laughs> and then other games get in the way. And I was like, no, 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 I, I just, I give up on it now. Unless it's like some big game I've been waiting for, I, I will not buy anymore yeah. for the winter sale. Yeah. I'm kind of just buy gifts for when it comes to that sort of stuff. <laughs> Yeah, I actually think this yeah. new approach could work. <laughs> yes, and, and they may make us rich when we sell the game for let's see, ninety percent off. It'd be like three dollars <laughs> a copy. We're we're looking, by the way. I guess since, since it kind of got mentioned jokingly about price, but you know we're looking for a retail price on our game. I, I think we're we've talked about um, forty bucks for a release, um, but. For the Kickstarter, as a reward for people for showing us early support and to help us get the finished game going, um, I think we're going to have an early bird special. It's going to be like $20, $25 bucks, um, for just a basic copy of Lord of Rigel, and then you can get like a deluxe edition for like $30. Bucks. Um, so we're trying to keep the game in a reasonable cost. Um, I know so many games are like $50, $60, $70. It's just ridiculous. Um, so we're trying to keep costs down. And we're just really hoping this game just takes off for everyone you know we want a huge community behind it and we've tried to you know do as many things whether it's financially or it's things like designing the game with low poly models um so you know low poly models or just not having the galaxy generation like destroy your cpu when it's you know generating the stars for everything you know and i, and I think i think adam mentioned here earlier talked about more and I think that's a great counterpoint to looking at things like Lord of Rigel. Um, and I'll post a link for more here. I'll look it up. See if I can even find it, though. Yeah, more of the game. Oh, that's a simple address for it. Um, and you guys can kind of look at it. But I look at things like more of the game, and, you know, I don't want to knock them down. I guess I, I, I want to use it as a point of of reference and to say, you know, this is how our product is going to be different. Um, games like more have just, you know, they're literally more, right? So you look at the first word military, you know, organization, research and economy. That's what more stands for. But in you know, the first thing in it, it's military. And that's where I, you know, as we we're discussing earlier about 4X games and where so many 4X games go wrong is, emphasizing the for you know the x from you know exterminate um you know we're not trying to do that we're trying to give you the player as many options as you can if you want to be an isolationist species that keeps to themselves but is researching high-end tech maybe looking to have an evolutionary leap for your species which is a potential game-winning outcome you know you can go hide yourselves out in the, in one of the arms of a spiral galaxy and defend your territory and simply interact with people just to gain resources for your research. If that's what you want to do, you can do that. You know, if you want to be militaristic, fine. Expand, exterminate, kill, and that's fun. You know, if you want to um, try to uh, use diplomacy and build a coalition of, of uh, species to attack some of the elder races, 
go for it. We want you to do that. We want you to have that experience. Um, something else with, with more that uh, would make us very different is just simply the scale of the game. Like, I, I want to say more has something in, like, the thousands of stars. I mean, it's just it's freaking huge. Like, how much stuff you can do with more and more really is more and they're not kidding with that um but we what we want to do with with more or we're, we're trying to do that more isn't is you know are more stars always better i mean we have a thousand twenty four and i'm sure tuxinet could program it to put two thousand ten thousand oh yeah one million stars uh, um, um yeah j just to like yeah you know, stop you there, um, I guess. Um, yeah. r right now, we have, like, a database of, like, star system names. And we have about 2,700, like, three and a half thousand. Um, but, you know, uh, if we get more names, we could generate as big as a galaxy we want. Shouldn't be unlimited. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and so, one of the things um, that you know, but we have to ask ourselves, like, if we program a thousand stars, um, why, you know, if we have a, you know, a thousand or a million or whatever, does that really improve the gameplay experience? I mean, yes, you can do it, but do you really want to control a one million star or a 10,000 star galaxy? Most of you probably would answer no. Yeah, and, and Ogden points out, it's miserable to micromanage, right? Because at some point, and, and this happens in Master of Orion, um, where even in that game, I, I want to say its maximum is something like 48, 64 stars, something like that. You get lazy after a while, because that's just the number of star systems. That, that doesn't even include some star systems you have five planets in. So it just starts multiplying out there. And you... Do you are you really managing the empire or are you just managing core worlds? So yeah, sixty four, and so yeah yeah sixty four stars and, and so do you really want to manage that? And you end up not managing you end up managing core worlds to meet an end you know an end game means right? They're just a means to an end. I'm managing uh, core systems to produce a military to invade these species so I can win the game. So this, but that doesn't really help gameplay. And so for us, we felt that a 1,024 star game is sufficiently large to provide you with a sense of scale, but it's not too large where you kind of get bogged down and just lay, yeah, uh, okay, there's 20 worlds that I just ignore. I'm going to focus on these ones and, and move on. Um, so one of the things that we've done with our game to try to make micromanaging of planets um, less likely to occur if a player doesn't want it to for a large game is uh, building um, queue lists that are automatically generated so that um, you can you can build a list and say you know what when I when I build a planet that is a Terran type world with lots of resources this is the building list that I want and you load that list up and the game is just going to do that. And, and, and then that way you don't, you don't have to really deal with that world again. It's just going to be auto ran. So that way you can have a galaxy, but you're not like ignoring things, right? You just given orders and the AI is just executing the orders that you've given it. Um, and that should make galaxy management a lot easier, but even with a system like that and you, let's say you have a 10,000 star galaxy that's just 10 times the number of times that you have to do that, right? Like, it gets kind of prohibitive after a while that, that it's not fun to do that. It becomes a task. It's not a game anymore. It's a job. And so that's one of the things that we're trying to avoid. Um, the other thing is species. Like, why don't we have a million species? And we've chosen the number that we've chosen, which I believe is 12, uh, with 10 being playable, two being elder races. Um, the reason we've done that is so that each race is really unique. We don't want races that are like one off of each other, right? We don't want to copy one race and say, oh yeah, 
this race is like this race, but there's like two different traits that we chose the number of traits that we chose. We chose the number of species that we chose so that each species is really unique. We're going to have some species that are robotic. We're going to have some species that are crystalline. We're going to have, of course, your humans. I mean, you know, but each species is going to be different. They're going to have different attitudes and they're going to be unique and that's really what we're looking for and a lot of the times even when we're discussing concept art you know we're really looking for is this a unique species is it is it unique and is it truly alien to you so sometimes we're choosing species that one of the great ones that we have um is our spy race and i absolutely love them um they're kind of like shapeshifters, and they'll communicate through you with color rather than using words. Now, of course, the game is going to show us a, a subtitle that's going to translate for you what that species is saying. But, you know, something that's really different. We just don't want every species, kind of like how Star Trek is, where they're just everyone is just a bunch of humanoids. Some humanoids look like dogs. Some humanoids look like cats. Some humanoids, you know, look like, you know, they look kind of reptilian, but they're still humanoid. We want to have species that are just really different and really alien. Um, and so that's another issue that when you have too many species, you go from having each species be really unique to just species are kind of one off of each other. And why do you need to copy yourself, right? You want to make everything really unique. Um, and... Some of the things, too, is like um, looking at things like, you know, our interface or you know, not so much the interface, but like looking at like, um, sorry, looking at stuff like uh, Galgen. We don't need to have a million different star types. And, and <laughs> yes, <laughs> Laracoon, you're right. It definitely is a story, yes, and that all the species came from the same genetic uh, genetic uh, makeup and, and it is a story but in our universe it doesn't it, that that wouldn't work with our story we're trying to make it a little more unique so that you kind of come at it from a different angle right like one of the great things about games like starcraft is you have three different species and they play very differently um and so that's one of the things that we're trying to do is um have each of the species just play differently we have real aliens uh and they're very different but going back and talking about and looking at things like galaxy generation, you know, we could throw more star types out there, but we wanted to blend in some realism with the game. We could have, you know, take every single color out there and just recolor the star and just say, oh, see, this is a new star type. We have more. We see we have we have more stars or take our planets and say, oh, see, we have. A Terran world that has blue oceans. Now this one has purple oceans, and this one has red oceans. We can do that. We add more stuff, but fundamentally, does it really add anything to the game, or is it just kind of this noise that takes you away from the game? And it's not very realistic either. I mean, you always try to walk a fine line between I want to make a realistic world that pulls the player in, and it's still a game, and is it fun? And so we're trying to, you know, keep things simple. We have, I think the only planet type that we have multiple models for um, is our gas giants. Um, and so we have gas giants that look more like um, Uranus or Saturn or Jupiter-like. Um, so we have some more variety because gas giants are very common uh, in, the, in the universe. So we wanted to make sure it just wasn't a whole bunch of, you know, uh, Jupiter's lined up in a row because that just looks kind of cheap. Um, so we're making it provide a little more variety for you. Um, but typically speaking, you'll find in our galaxies that things like, um, you know, Terran worlds are going to be more sparse, harder to find, and so they'll be valuable resources. You're. <laughs> Um, yeah, I guess. I know, it's Uranus. 
I always, I've always told it was Uranus. So I still stuck something after after you know almost three decades on in this world. <laughs> I'm grim, what a guy. <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, you know, that just kind of gives you some design philosophy. And I guess some contrast as to what a lot of other games are out there. You know, it's just trying to keep things simple for you guys, and and ultimately any feature that we that we add to the game. Um, we're going to ask ourselves the question, you know, what benefit does it have for the player? Is it really a tangible benefit or is this just a feature, you know, for the sake of adding features? And so we don't want to just clutter the game up with features. We want to make sure that everything has a purpose and that you're going to use it for that. You know, that you'll actually use it. You know, you need to use it to win. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah, the galaxy did look like a had Chipotle. <laughs> got, 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 a little bit of smattering there. I don't know, Tuxina. I, I think your original method was looking better. It seems like you were closer to the ideal shape. Yeah, but I'm, I'm the, getting quite close now. Because now I actually have more stars in the arms. Just wait a couple of seconds. Okay. I, I just need to get the numbers for the core right. Okay. Oh, maybe you were right. <laughs> there just seems to be a breakup, though. Do you notice that? Yes, that's because I only have 10% of the stars in the actual core. Okay. Uh, so I guess I'll just make the core a little bit. Do you want the core about that size, or do you want me to just get more, just make it smaller, basically? I think the core that size would be good, and I think another thing to think about is, is can we get the arms to be like thicker and wider? Yeah, but then I then they can't spin that fast because then they go into each other. But I'll make gotcha. it work. Okay. Yeah, this is incredibly difficult, <laughs> but it's just trying to get that fit and finish. That's always the most difficult part of the project. Oh yeah. Okay, I'll up the to twenty-five percent or something. Try like, yeah, or tw yeah, maybe like twenty percent. Yeah. Just try doubling because at that point you're, you're gonna double the number of stars, I and mean, that should give you a good idea if that's the. Yep. Kind of happy I had to go down this way because it required me to refactor some of the generator, make it look better. Oh, good. Yeah. See you guys, constant optimization, just getting better. I still love that legendary galaxy size. It's, that icon looks so cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's see. Yes, Odgrim, uh, that'll just, you know, it'll just require Ace to change his prefabs, I guess. Yeah, and Odgrim, um, Ace has kind of been holding off on doing, like, more fit and finish on the Galaxy View until um, Tuxent and I today were able, you know, until Tuxent was able to get things more sorted with the with the Galaxy Um and he'll go in there, kind of make the last second adjustments, but we're just trying to get the basics of it. That was, you know, you know, the sad part is that's pretty darn close to me. The arms seem a lot more natural looking, rather, yeah. you know, rather than being so yeah. tight. Just a little bit more tightness to them. I think it would be okay. So you want them to be um, a, a little more shaped, but not. Not where they were before, because before it was like it's almost like you just kind of drew a line. It's like, yep, stars go in this line, you know. But yeah. Yeah. you know, that's really close. Uh, Ace going to weigh in here on this gal because this is. I think that galaxy is close. 
because to me it looks very natural. It looks like minus the, kind of the gaseous uh, look of a galaxy would have. It fits the overall shape of the images that we're presenting to in our stuff. And if uh, the audience, if you got things you want to weigh in on on this, let us know too. Because ultimately, you got to play it too. Yes. Uh, are you having him adjust the model anymore? Because he's been UV mapping it for me. And I think we had the model done. He's just working on a, on a redefining the UV map. Okay. I'll so that's a six one. Yeah, that's a six arm, right? Yep. Yep. I think the main problem is that they uh, spin. I, I Actually, I think we could fix this by just setting down the galaxy radius to like 50 or something for legendary. Um, okay. Because when we have a spin like this as drastic as we have now, the arms are going mm -hmm. to be like very long. Um, okay. Yeah. I'll try to make it look good, I guess. Uh, Newman's on. Excellent. Thank you, Newman. It means a lot from you, man. And we actually, we have Newman on here now, which is another one of our 3D modelers. Um, he worked on the Diaspora project. He also is the one that um, built the Catraxi ships that I posted earlier. He's done fantastic work, as well as Ogrim. I showed you guys some of the human work he's been doing. Sure. Looks just awesome. Oh, yes, much appreciated, yes. Newman, by the way. We just need, like, I don't know, four or five more Oddgrims and Newmans, and we'll, we'll be fine. The game will be released in like six months. <laughs> oh no, I chose the wrong galaxy type. <laughs> oh, is that, is that a cluster? <laughs> yep. I think I've got some. Sorry, the stream, the stream has some delay to it, so it's like, what? <laughs> I think setting down the radius helps pretty. Yeah, it looks much better now. I think. The only thing I dislike about it is, and, and weigh in here, folks. I, I, I think it looks less natural. And it's getting that, you know, so the arms now, yes, they're wider and they're thicker, but the distance between the arms is getting like that unnatural cut again. You want me to put them closer or? Yeah, because before the way you, the way you had it before you made the last adjustment, I thought it looked a lot more natural. Okay, I'll make the arms less fat and um, the up to speed. Yeah, yeah, and Ace is weighing in here too. It looks like he's saying the same thing. I go back to the last study that you, I, that was, I, to me, I thought that was really close. Yeah. Really close. Um, and the nebulas are looking great, by the way. Even zoomed out all the way like that, they look really sharp. Okay, let's see how this goes. And yeah, this is one of the best yeah. sides of streaming, if you ask me. It was like, instead of using like three days making the numbers right, because, you know, text chat, you can just do it on a stream. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. Yeah, I much prefer. The only thing I dislike is the, the probably 10 to 20 second delay. Yeah. Which, thank God for Skype. Cause that makes life a lot better. <laughs> Man, it was terrible trying to like text type with you guys. You're like, oh, what do you think about this? And you're already be like way past that point in reality. Trying to make the numbers look right. Yeah. I gotta start writing this stuff down. Problem is with the delay, I never know what to write down. <laughs> I'm like, what? Is this the one? <laughs> is this the good one? <laughs> Yeah, I've been actually thinking about that, Newman. I just, you know. Maybe we need to set radius up again. 
because then it looked. You know, I I really thought you had it right. Two galaxies. Well, yeah, the one before the big shift. Oh, okay. Because if you look at the arms, you could still tell that there were arms. I'll closer, set up the radius again, actually. Okay, you're, so you're you're closer here. Uh, let's go to sixty-four. And there you go, folks. Those are my JSON tables that he's adjusting. <laughs> <laughs> God, those <laughs> terrible things. <laughs> Get rid of them all. Is that a small... Is it, she made it bigger? Uh, I made it up to 64 again, the general size. Uh, but I can make the arms a little bit fatter and try to mimic what you thought looked good, I guess. Yeah. You lost the magic here, man. You lost the magic. Yeah. Gotta get the magic back. Oh, yeah. It sucks, too, because I feel like, oh, man, we're right on. But, yeah. I was like, no, we lost it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think this yeah. looks pretty good. I'll try to... Make a thing in between them, I guess. I guess I like a heavier core, like not as densely packed as it you know was before you even started doing any of this, but something that's got kind of a heavier core within kind of like the arms are they, they don't it doesn't look like they extend so far out from the middle. It kind of looks like it's a little fatter. See, Newman agrees on the core. See, see. <laughs> Getting close. See, I I'm cool with the core, I think. I think it's just, it's the it's the arms. Like, I'm trying to think of a way to describe, I don't know. The distribution is good. It's the shape. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite mm -hmm. sure. You want to arms you know, to like turn him. less or yeah or yeah because you know, it reminds me of you know, you know those things that like those black and white circles just like hypnotize you <laughs> that's what it reminds me of right now i feel like if you like spin the galaxy i become like hypnotized no. like and they, they just don't look quite as natural as the the uh, icons that ace did for the selection mm -hmm. grant you those are based on real galaxies but Oh, maybe I should. Oh, give me a second. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Marvarlin, that's exactly what I'm saying. Like, yeah, like you kind of have a core, but you can kind of see arms kind of coming out of it. But I feel like the the arms start too early. Like they start so deep in there, it just looks like it's just kind of a bunch of lines spinning out from the middle. <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> Ace and Newman have some good comments here. I enjoy, it, especially the KS backers. Yeah, so let's, let's hypnotize you with Galaxy View. Give us your money. <laughs> Maybe they'll have like a single stage uh, security question like Apple does, or it's two stage, and we can just steal all their PayPal monies. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Yeah, I'm going to need to pull down the spin rate. Okay. Yeah, 
Newman, yes. I really do believe that Q did it for fun. <laughs> he probably... He finds like, oh yeah, screw it, let's just try this out. Okay, you're closer. Like, do you, do you want the arms to turn that fast, or do you want me to make them turn less, or less? Yeah. Let's try less. I, 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 yeah, it's terrible because I really have a hard time imagining how each of these inputs does something. I think, I think that's my biggest problem. Like, I think I'd be a lot more help to you if I were like, oh yeah, like. This input makes this thing happen. Okay, so yeah, I just want a little less of this. So I'll make that work. Yeah. But I don't get how the inputs work. So it, for me, it's it's purely like subjective. It's like, oh, just a little less of this and a little more of that, which does you zero good. Yeah. Which, by the way, we will have space amoebas in this game. Okay, this is bad. So whatever this is, do the opposite. If, if, if so, if, if I said more, you said less spin speed. Yep. Yep. Okay. I want more spin speed. Now I know what it does. I want more. Right. <laughs> <laughs> See, now I know. <laughs> and knowing's <laughs> half the battle. GI Joe would say. Pull it up to like six. By the way, guys, I hope more of you will get on our forum, which I will post up here again for you. Please join our forum and like us on Facebook. Oh, I'll put it on the here. sticky chat, I guess. Oh, okay. Oh, you did. Perfect. Oh, no, I, I, I will do it. Oh, yeah, the Twitter and Facebook I did. Yeah. Oh, oh, but not the uh, not, not the forum. No. Can I do it on mine? Nope. If you just to post the, the forum, uh, I'll post it there. Copy and paste it. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, talk to us. Because we want to hear from you. We want to build a community around this game. And you guys are an integral part of that. Can't do it without you. What do you want, Icarus? Oh, sorry. Ooh, that's better. But like, a little... I just think the arms aren't very well defined. In, um... Yeah. God, I, ah, I wish we'd go back to that one. Yid one is perfect. It's damn near perfect. Okay. I'll, tr I'll try something here. Okay. Can we shorten the arm? Oh, no, but that's spin control, right? Spin control um, controls arm. Yes, uh, the spin speed thing. Thingy. Um, that's basically... Yeah, yeah. It, it controls how fast the arms turn. Because I'm, I'm wondering if shorter arms would help the problem. Yeah, that was what I'm thinking. Uh, I'm going to... Okay. I think I know where to go. Pull it down to five. Hey, 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 that's close. Yeah. yeah. That's just, really close. Just, just more defined arms, correct? What do, you, uh, do you want to post that just one more time? Because I only saw it for like just a, a snippet of a second. That yeah, really close. That's, that's because I want to do. Okay, I'll do my modification and then I'll go back to the other one. Okay, perfect. So this is the modified one you're going to see now. Yeah. I like the other better. Something in between. Mm -hmm. Because I see Ace wants more defined arms, and you want them more like clumped together, kind of. Yeah, let's just try halfway. It usually seems to work for everything in this game. Halfway in the middle always seems to work for because <laughs> yeah. ace and i will have will have competing uh sides and somewhere we always seem to find a compromise and the compromise always is the it's always better than our than each of our opinions on its own oh nice oh. i think this is in the middle i'm not sure okay 
Hmm. Hello, uh, Jonathan Her. Yeah, Jonathan Her. Thank you for joining us. Man, we're getting good views and good traffic. I know some folks had to leave earlier. Oh, dude, I've doubled my like view count today. That's cool. Yeah, I know. We've yeah, I just had a great turnout. Thank you all so much. A little less, uh, a little less than that, even I'd say. Okay, so okay, so more towards you or more towards? Ace? Yeah, more towards me. I think the arms are still pretty good. Okay, I'll do like five point eight five. But what's awesome is we're close. Now we're just now we're just making fine tuning. <laughs> yeah. We're not trying to make swath changes. Now so. we at least have some would... ballpark figures. Exactly. I can deal with that. Nah, okay. Go back to the other one. This looks too congealed now, almost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like how we're just doing a change of like, I don't know, point or like 3% or something between the two numbers. It, it, it makes a difference. It oh, really yeah. does. Yeah, Ace, um, as I was saying too, I, I think the new one is just a, li a, little, a little too blurred. We are going to need to change all the sizes for the different galaxy sizes, though. Okay. Like in gaming, you know what? Go. I'm willing to call this a happy compromise. I think this is about as good as it's going to get. The arms are well defined, but they're not too well defined. You don't quite get the hypnotic look. I think part of the issue that I have too is it's not really fixable. It's how we're displaying the stars because we don't have like a gas a, a gas body, you know, around the stars. So we're trying to have the stars do both this volumetric look, but also like be in a good position. If that makes sense, what I'm trying to say. Like they're trying to do two things at once. Um, so I think this is good, Ace. If you're good with this, I'm good with this. Yeah, Morvlin, I see you on the forum. Welcome on board, and thank you for signing up on the forum. And as more of you guys do that, we're gonna have to just. I'll make more of an effort to just post more stuff on the forum and, and all of us, the team will really try to get some more data in that general discussion area. Um, so that you guys have some stuff to look at and, uh, you know, make your forum membership actually valuable and useful to you <laughs> rather than just a kind of gimmick. Thing. So, but uh, Ace, if you're, if you're good with this, um, I'm good with this. And I, I think, I think we have numbers that I could need to record then for our, our galaxy gen. Okay, Ace is good with this. So let me get um, Notepad++ going here so I can get these numbers recorded. You know what? I'll just you fix the in, uh, null index or like the index error, and then I'll push it with the numbers okay. I have now. Okay. But I thought you said on each one of the galaxies we had to make an adjustment now. Yes. they. And well, that's why I wanted to record your numbers. Yeah, this is just for like legendary, basically. Oh, yeah, I need to add the JSON support, don't I? Yes, so that's why I was wanting to start getting everything recorded. Yep. Is the messaging system not... What? Luckily, these numbers only need to be for spiral galaxies, so it shouldn't be a big problem. And I think you can just add them into the galaxy rule set JSON. Okay. Uh, I'll Perfect. start doing the, up here. yeah, I'll do the necessary modifications and then I'll, okay. um, yeah. Well, well, my thought is, oh, cause, oh, okay. I was just thinking what I'll, what I was going to do was I'll add to the JSON. Now you can start filling with the other galaxy stuff. I'll just keep recording them. And then at the end, 
um, you can do the work that you can do on the back end to just yeah. take the JSONs that I'm bringing up and do that. So, what are the inputs that I need to write down here for you? Uh, I'm going to need like Galaxy Core size. Okay, core size. Uh, and I'm gonna need the spin speed. Oh yeah, and um, the random threshold. Okay. Got it. It says for increase, send accuracy in the message. Oh yeah, you need to change some permission settings for the default user, it looks like. Yeah, and, I, and I'll do that for you in just a second. Let me, um, I just wanted to get this data down real quick and I will make that adjustment because we really don't have a ton of people that aren't, that aren't developers. So I've never really tested thoroughly the member group on the forum. But I'm oh, glad yeah. you're there to do it. And we're going to need to change the size settings for all the galaxies that have spirals. Okay. So, okay. Basically, um, uh, yeah. that's what made the galaxy look good, was me making the galaxy a little bit smaller. Okay, so we can still we got... think about them in like a 64 parsec way of thinking, I guess. Um, but just the in-engine size needs to be a little bit smaller. Yeah, that's no problem. And we can do things like we can make modifier JSONs. I'll just mo or, or, or uh, uh, JSON. You wouldn't need that. Like we could just do the math, like distance traveling in the galaxy. So in, that in Unity it looks one way, but then in terms of calculations for like distance from planet to the next, you can just add a modifier. Yeah. So if like yeah. you know if 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 in Legendary Galaxy is true, add one point you know zero one percent modifier to make it a sixty four parsec calculation for how you know, far ships move mm -hmm. per turn. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's super easy. We can definitely do that. Awesome. 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 And now we have 18 people on here. This is awesome. Thank you guys. We, we really appreciate the support. And it's good to know that even at such an early stage in the game that people out there interested in just watching the developer blog and getting some information. It's just great. Or you need developer stream. Yeah. Let's see. We'll see if we can get the forums going here with user permissions. Oh, yeah. I'll oh, also yeah. do some changes to the generator so that it'll um, uh, choose the number of arms based on the size. I haven't done that. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just that should be really easy since you already have all the data in the JSON file. <laughs> yep. Okay, and I'm just gonna call this revised for now until we get everything sorted out. Is that. Oh yes, I used to post some pictures of the tactical stuff. Ah, what a guy! Perfect. Yeah, I'm gonna like. I think Vu will return on like Wednesday or Thursday. Yes. So I'll hopefully he'll make the necessary UI changes he wants to do over the weekend, and then he'll start working on AI and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which will be awesome. Yeah, looking forward to that. So messages. I'm going to assume that when it says manage for messages, that it means that you can actually have messages. So <laughs> we'll find out. So if anything is funky on the forums with permissions, please let me know. This should work. Oh, but the other issue too is, okay, that's really odd. 
Um, Morvalin and MX Cube, um, can you let me know if you guys, it still shows you as a guest on the forum. Is your guys' email and everything confirmed? Because that's the other thing I'm wondering is they're still listed as guests in the registry. And that's what I'm thinking is the problem. Yeah, I guess I'm going to remove the um, number of arms variable from the inspector. Okay. Because it's not going to get used. Yeah. <laughs> and do you also have the those numbers too when you, when, you, when you have a second that I can just pull off the core size and all that stuff? Yeah, I have the numbers for the legendary yeah. one at least. Okay, perfect. That's, that's what I wanted to get down. Mm -hmm. Don't want to lose those again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a fine balance with those. It really is. Like you're saying, you made like 3% changes, and it really did make all the difference in the world. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, you know, a 3% shift on 1,000 stars is a lot. I mean, it's still, what, 30 stars? And that can make a pretty big difference in the, in the, in the area size that we have. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think I removed something oh, I'm actually going to use. Oh, no, it's back. Oh, did you? Okay. <laughs> no! Okay, <laughs> so... Uh... Well, I got so many... Okay. Uh, yeah, I just had to find the right JSON file. Can I say that, that, that there are too many JSON files in this game? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh well. <laughs> you be the judge of that. Yeah, when this game gets released and you guys get to play it, you're going to love how many JSONs there are to fiddle with. <laughs> you guys will shoot, yeah. You can, <laughs> you can pretty much, like in Galaxy Generation, pretty much adjust anything you'd ever want to do. Um, with the JSON files. If you want to add, like, if you wanted to make a small six spiral arm galaxy, you could do that if you wanted to. It would look funny, but you could do it. And all the stuff that Tuxnet has been adjusting this entire session, so looking at um, rotation speed and all that stuff, those will all be in the JSON files. So you can completely adjust those. You can make you know, maybe you want more defined arms than what we're going for. You can do that. Maybe you just want more of a uh, less defined arms. You can make those adjustments too. Um, so you can kind of do it whatever way, you know, you want to do it. Um, so I think it'd be great too. I think it's actually one of the things I'm looking forward to the most is that once the game is released and we, if we have a great community behind us, um, people trying to make their own version of the game. I'm just really curious to see where people want to take this game and, and where, where it could go. I think it could be a lot of fun. Oh, yay, Tuxent, you're commenting. <laughs> 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 I love it when Voosters was like, oh, crap, 
I need to, you know, <laughs> comment. I never comment. Bad. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to at least. I haven't done it enough, but you know, I gonna start somewhere, I guess. Yeah. Hey. One's better than none. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Ah. Uh... Oh, let me look here. You know, I'm not sure on that. You know, this vanilla has a notifications thing, and we switched. We used to have PH, uh, PBB3, and I switched over to this because of the mobile stuff. I'm, I'm still not quite sure everything that you can do. I saw Scott send me that message, and I'm not sure if it's just a private message or if it's almost like every account has like kind of like a, a billboard, I guess, that you can, um, like, kind of post, you know, your information to, and that's what he did. I'm just not completely sure about that yet. I think as time goes on, we will find out. Yeah, actually, I do. Um, I do have Skype, and I have no problem chatting with you on there. Um, my account name is just Accurus on there. Yeah, uh, they, they should be ace. Uh, in fact, let me check the JSON. But yes, um, looks like for a tiny galaxy, only cluster is selectable. For small, only cluster is selectable. Medium, only cluster and two-arm spiral is selectable. Oh, and a, or, and a, and a barred two-arm spiral as well. Yeah, so it should be using all the stuff that you had uh, in your table. Oh yeah, I need to make Rule Legends make the rules for that be implemented into the UI. Yeah, it's just not implemented yet, um, Ace. Yeah. That, that's why, uh, yeah, it, it, it's still just a wide open thing, but he's going to implement it. He's on like 10 minutes of work, but you know, uh, yeah, <laughs> shouldn't be a problem. You know, Ace. I think we can do. I think we can do Baird or Bard Baird. I don't think it's going to be a problem. Um, by the time but, we get this thing released and stuff. What's actually Bard Galaxy like? Yeah. It's it's where you have a huge central core and with just little arms coming out of it. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, that should be easy. 
Yeah, yeah. We already have, or not we. I really should. Taxinet has already has all, has, has all the code to make that work. It's just fine tuning everything. Oh, and um, Morvalin, yes, you are correct. It's that red mountain. I, I, I had to look it up because I've never even said it. It's just whatever the, the Windows default is or Skype default is. Oh, it looks like it chooses the right number of arms given the galaxy size. Yay! <laughs> At least it doesn't crash, so, you know, that's a good sign. Ah, now for the fun argument index thing oh okay but uh, yeah okay. i see uh, yeah wait isn't the galaxy i'm making now kind of a bar galaxy which one? The one you're currently making? Yeah. It shouldn't be. Okay. I don't know. Like, it's... Ace, you're the science guru, but uh, most of the bars, though, are more... They have more of, like, like, like an elliptical center. Like, do you see how, how wide the ellipse is in the middle? It's almost like a... Kind of like a line that's been bent out of shape a bunch of times. Rather than a core with arms coming out of it, like... Um, let's see if I can get this going here. Yeah, like, like it just looks like you literally a line just bent around. Okay, but is there only like two arms, or can there be like six, or? Wow, I'm just sitting here wondering how the hell we got 17 viewers. Like, yeah, this is good. I know I'm saying great. it a lot of times, but yeah, this is a record. Oh yeah, I think it's, I, I, I just got to ask, how did you guys actually find us? What Was it via Facebook, Twitter? Yeah. That's that's a great question to ask. Yeah, I mean, we need to know how is the word getting out in the universe about us. Oh, okay, did you? That's oh. cool. So Hitbox is working good. I guess we're getting a higher ranking if we have more viewers. Oh, that's good. Hey, keep getting on here, folks. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. And I I found Hitbox just by watching Notch, I guess. <laughs> so I think he helped a great deal for <laughs> Hitbox in general. Yeah, Adam, uh, if I manage to like fix up all the uh, current stuff we need to get working in the Galaxy Generator, I'll start looking into Bard, Bard Spiral, I guess. I didn't think it should be too hard, but yeah. Popular? Oh, wow. <laughs> That's yeah, really cool. We're <laughs> <laughs> really? Do we actually show up that way? Wow. Wow. I'm done to go look now. Shoot. Yeah. Hitbox for the win. <laughs> what? We're it, really? We're in the popular games? Like off of the, I'm just kind of looking here at the browse too, just to see what's there. I don't see anything though. Oh, if you go to games, you can actually see game development has quite a higher ranking in the um, in the uh, sidebar there. 
Yeah, and if you go into game dev, there's only three people streaming. So that's good, I guess. Yeah, that's that's cool. Oh yeah, if you go to popular and scroll far enough down, there I am, actually. Are you? Okay, so I should keep looking down far enough, huh? Yeah, to about 15. I should be there. See, I must... Okay, because I looked at popular games, and it's not... Hold on here. If you click the like grid on the side of hitbox, right? I go to popular. There you can huh? go down to... Oh, okay. I was. Uh, I'm sorry. I was looking at games. My bad. <laughs> yeah, if you look at games, there's like, I don't know. There's an icon for game development quite far up there. Oh yeah, that's true. You're discussing with that guy, aren't you? Yes, I am right now. Sorry. Yeah. Like I'm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you have fun doing that. I'll make the galaxy work. Yeah, sorry, I'm being terrible right now. I should, I, should, I, I try to do both, and you know I suck at multitasking, which is just terrible. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know what? I'll add the necessary fields into the JSON, and you can just fill them out. By the way, you're number fifteen. Or no, no, oh no, no. It's just, oh, it has you pegged at fifteen viewers, is what it is. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, actually, you're not terribly far down the list. That's great. That's awesome. Thank you guys so much. Really appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, see you, Grim. Oh yeah, indeed, oh, yeah. Adam. Texting it. I think I think I can say that. I think we're good. Uh, uh, Marvelin or Morvelin is looking to try to do some web dev work for us, which is awesome. Since Ken will be leaving us probably next week. Oh, seriously? On That's the great site. So, yeah, which is great. So we always need people that can help us. I mean, like I said, we're an indie team. 
we don't pay anything right now, but if you have spare time, if you have interest in the project, you know, please contribute. That's what we're all doing, it's just spare time. I think so far I'm the only one that's actually lost money on this project. I, I, you, know, you know, you buy like web, uh, web space and all that stuff, web hosting, but you know, ultimately we, our goal is to, is to form a, an indie uh, game company. Uh, so, This won't be an, um, it won't be an open source project, um, but it will be highly moddable. Yeah, we'll we'll try yeah. to make the like a good modding framework for you guys to work on. I guess that won't be for the demo, of course, because that's way too much work. Uh, because Unity by itself isn't very happy in like modding, so you need to, you know. Um, do it yourself, kind of. Yeah. But we'll definitely have modding support for the final game. I'm soon done with the modifications, by the way. For the... Sorry. <laughs> I was typing <laughs> on Skype to Orville and... <laughs> uh, it's fine, it's fine. We need web developers. Uh, I'm done. soon done with the modifications for uh, loading the stuff from the JSON, basically. Okay, awesome. So I just need the data then that you had for the legendary. So you said there was... Three criteria, core size, spin speed, and random threshold. Yeah, I'm going to have to add one more. I just found out. Uh, okay. I'm also going to include the uh, basically the percentage of stars in, this, uh, uh, oh, in the core. We're going to need that. I'll, I'll, I'll put core density. How about that for a term? Is that going to work? Uh, sure. But I wouldn't okay. start working on it yet because I'm adding it to the table now so you can just go in and alter it later i guess oh i know i'm just trying to get your numbers in is all oh oh, sure. oh you're oh you're on your end oh awesome forget that i'm not gonna worry about it actually i'll close my stuff out so it's trying to be a nice guy i doesn't do it on my end but eh, you'll do it that works too <laughs> yeah it's better if i just do it now because you know reasons core density yeah you're better at naming stuff than me, I guess. Oh, well. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'd like to think that six years in college did that for me. <laughs> <laughs> I would like I literally just I'm... name it percentage of stars in the core or something <laughs> like that. Would be nice. Um, as for yeah, and we are looking at trying to get a, a uh, yeah yeah private repository. See, initially what happened was we ran someone set up a Linux server for us. I was using it on, on a laptop. Um, um, so, 
like, we had this Linux server that was running. I need to quit reading Skype and talking. I'm miserable at it. Just need to focus on talking. Uh, <laughs> so we had this Linux server built out of this crappy laptop that my wife's work surplus, and we had a private repository set up on it. But we had just a bunch of different issues, and people could upload to it. And ultimately, the other big nag was, like, our web server was hosted, like, on this laptop through my home connection. So I went ahead and I bought um, web hosting service. Um, and we went with a GitHub repository, which, but we're still not sure, like, with our repository. Uh, I know Vu Legends wants to move over to, um, uh, what's that other site? I always forget what the name of it is. Yeah. Uh, wants to, he wants to move over there. And the other potential, too, is if I upgrade our web hosting account, I actually can get a server that I can just have direct access to. Oh, welcome back. Um, I actually have a... I can, I can, I can have the... Uh, yeah, Bitbucket. Yep. Yeah. And... Um, yeah, that's why everyone keeps saying this Bitbucket's really nice and it's cheaper. And I, I'm not super impressed with GitHub. Like, I, I like how easy the application is to use that it comes with, but it can be a real pain in the ass sometimes excuse my excuse me there on that but yeah it's a big pain in the butt so i'm still not quite sure where i want us to go with it um and money wise i don't mind dropping money here and there um for instance like our game studio is incorporated we are a legal entity um and so you know yeah and we'll have to work on it soon and you know probably I just kind of want to gauge and see how things go because I don't want to, you know, spend a bunch of money out of pocket every month. Like, I want this project to see where it goes and, and you know, if it looks like it has all the potential. Of course, I'm willing to spend money. I think I've spent a few hundred bucks so far on the project. Nothing terrible, um, but something. Um, so, yeah, at some point, we'll start moving over. The only problem is if I go with, like, a web hosting account, it's a monthly subscription, and I think it's, like, 50 or 60 bucks a month to increase it so that I actually have like um, admin access on the web hosting server so I actually like install any old program I want. Like essentially it's a normal computer you can use versus just using their built-in little GUI system that has a limited marketplace. Yeah, and yeah, essentially VPS and that's what this web hosting service offers. Um, so I'm back. I'm back. Oh, you're back. Yay. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, never mind. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm going to send uh, uh, Morvalin over to you on Skype. Um, talk about coding stuff potentially for the future. Yeah, sure. Uh, I figure just when you have time after the after the stream here, you mm -hmm. can chat with him about you know what we need. Because my thought is you know potentially phase two is coming up here sooner than later, which is going to be getting everything strewn together for um, the 
you know, the, the systems like, you know, econ, uh, Wait, econ and will they be working on the main system or, or, or like the game or just web dev? Well, potentially both. Oh, okay. okay. So that's cool. Because I mean, web dev won't be forever. I mean, essentially, we just need to get the site up and going, but it's not going to be something that's like constantly just, oh, yeah, you know. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I won't have time today, but I'll be available tomorrow. mad about something. Did I fuck up? What did uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. Now, 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 he, now he's really coding here, folks, because the cursing's really coming out now. See, we tried being really good <laughs> the past few hours, but now I know he's really thinking about something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course, I'm stupid. Yes, please work. Oh, oh, uh, yeah, I'm stupid. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. I guess I could, yeah, I'm gonna stay here for, till about, uh, yeah, about 4 p.m. your time, I think. It's 3.19 my time. Okay, then, fi uh, 5, yeah, 5.
Okay, I believe it should be working now. Guess we'll find out. Okay. Uh, oh, errors, of course. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, there. Okay, cool. Now imagine this will be like a bug I'm gonna work like two weeks on. No. 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 There is no galaxy, it's all dead. Um, I think something's wrong. <laughs> Perhaps the lack of stars, <laughs> I told you that. There's no galaxy. Something's wrong. Yeah. Now it won't even make no. the galaxy. <laughs> yeah, Adam, I always blow it up. Yeah, damn the apes. I'm not much of all them apes. <laughs> Oops. By the way, I'm pleased that, that it's that it's uh, technically like almost a half hour past our stream, our broadcast time. We still have 16 awesome people watching this. Very pleased about that. Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah. And actually, it looks like there's even like like people are kind of cycling through here, which is great too. So I know we had some different people at the beginning, and now we're having some different people at the end. So we're just keeping up a good stream here, people. Which is very cool. Is, I like that. Yes. Yeah, I was really worried. Like, some people would just start and then be like, okay, yep, it's been like an hour. I'm done. And then our rates would just drop. But yeah, it's been really nice and really steady. It's nice having everyone here. Oh, Mike's back. Hello, Mike. Welcome back. Oh, yeah. Um, a fool's duty. That's a strange thing about, like, yeah, it's actually fun to watch other people program. I don't know why. It's especially but... fun when it's your game. <laughs> it makes it <me> better. <laughs> yeah. Try something crazy. <sighs> so is it? So no galaxy forms, or is it just the first one? It crashes again. I don't know why. Uh... Okay, I'm gonna need to look up some other code. To see how I did before. <laughs> Man, your view count's going up here, Tuxina. Geez, 207. I think you were like at 130. Yeah. Yeah. Man, getting up there, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, it looks like my father is getting quite active in the chat again. That's cool. 
Is he? <laughs> yep. Okay, so I guess there's... Like it doesn't crash. So I guess it's getting the numbers, but yeah. Nineteen viewers. That's cool. Nineteen. Yep. Okay, that is officially a record. Oh, it's under eighteen again, though. Oh no. Who left? Who did it? <laughs> Somebody left. And the worst part is they can't even hear me ask them who left because they're gone. Yeah. We're close because yeah, nineteen would have been a record. Uh no, it'll it'll just be it'll just be uh, classes of ships. So you'll have like frigates, cruisers, uh, destroyers, battleships, titans, and um, oh, we are at nineteen. Yes, Yay. record. Uh, and doom stars and doom stars are just absolutely huge. I think I want to say they're like six kilometers in size. They're just huge. Whoa. Whoa. I'm just staring at the yes. JSON table. Oh, I think I found the, yeah, of course. <laughs> I forgot to ask, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, I've actually found the whole course of the problem now because I forgot to oh, assign right. the core size i only assign the density spin speed and random threshold so um basically then the cluster galaxy generator tries to place like i don't know a hundred stars in a zero um you know big core so you know mm -hmm. impossible scenario that's cool gotcha at least it's something easy like that <laughs> like it's a crazy thing by the way, we, we appreciate that curse because people will not leave now because it's not going to be good for them if they do. So. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's what I need to sign. Oh, I was quite afraid there for a second trying to find the error. Oh, Scotch is actually oh. watching. That's cool. Was Scotch watching? Yeah. Oh, someone just got the curse. I see that number's 18. Oh, no. He left. Someone's he left. getting cursed. That's, that's going to hurt them. Scotch left. Oh, no. Scotch is still here. Oh, there he is. Now he's gone. Oh, Scotch. <laughs> You're a team member, man. We can make your milk sour. Oh, by the way, so. Norman, I made you a moderator, so now you can post pictures if you want to. If you want to, of course, it's your choice. Uh, oh yeah, Mercury and Mike, uh, we are looking into getting mod support. It is uh, one of our goals and we are, 
you know, it's really too early to start planning that um, because we're still focusing heavily on the uh, tactical demo or like the Galaxy slash tactical demo, I guess. We will re release alongside the Kickstarter. Uh, but me and Wu Legends are thinking about ways to implement modding support into Unity. Um, so yeah, you will be able to mod, I guess. That'll be cool. And then, well, the game will have, oh yeah, we're trying to get mod support going, and, and uh, we're talking about, I think you're offline though, Mike, um, but is that we want there to be a modding community. Like, that's how you build just a general community. I mean, there's games like, I'll, I'll name case in point for a game I used to play, that was terrible, but had a great modding community was Star Trek Legacy, and it was a okay game. I used to be part of the Legendary Generations uh, mod team, and the game was great because you could mod it pretty well. Though by the end, by the time I kind of parted ways with modding that game, you couldn't. A lot of things were hard coded into the EXE, so we kind of had taken the modding to the limit of what you could do, which was like adding new models changing the XML code for the for the GUI, but we had made a total conversion mod. But I guarantee you, if Star Trek Legacy wasn't even halfway as moddable as it was, that game would have fizzled out probably a year and a half, if not two years before it did, because it was mods ultimately that were keeping the game alive. It wasn't the game itself. And not to say that we're going to release a terrible game that you have to mod to fix, but I think the point goes to show that um, modding can keep a game alive for a long time. Star Trek Bridge Commander is a case in point of that, where people literally made Bridge Commander last years and years and years past its release point, and ultimately the top modders from that group ended up creating Star Trek Excalibur, which is which is a great indie game coming Ooh, out seriously? soon. Ooh, that's cool. Yeah. Oh yeah. All those guys, like, like Nano FX, that game engine, was all based on the guy who was altering the game engine in Bridge Commander. And essentially, they got to a point where they were modding so many things in Bridge Commander. They were just like, you know what? We just need to make a, a game from scratch with a brand new engine. And so, um, oh, were you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Newman, you were saying that. Yeah, yeah. And and that's what's so great about like Bridge Commander is that you can build huge communities around a game that's moddable. So that's absolutely our thing. And I'm, I was saying earlier, I'm super excited to see, like, you know, when the game gets released, what we can do or what people can do with the game, you know.
Yeah, that's cool, Mer Mercury Mike. Like, I really want to, me personally, I want to do the Kerbal Space Program kind of approach to modding. Um, okay, yeah, Icarus. Um, and I don't know if you know how that works, but basically you, uh, by the way, it's also made in Unity. But basically they have one folder, right, in the game directory where you can, um, you know, uh, I, I haven't looked at it too much but you know i have, have been throwing mods in there oh okay that's cool so you know you have the folders with the mods and stuff and you just put your mod in there and the game will load it up and i kind of wanted to be like that uh but of course it's going to depend on uh, the game type and stuff like that what we want to be moddable so uh that will be be a very fun thing to do and it'll it won't be easy but i think all in all it'll be worth it And uh, as Acurus mentioned, modding keeps games alive. Uh, and we want this game to be like, you know, the best 4X game out there. Um, but, you know, modding gives more variety to the, to the game. Um, yeah. But we won't really start thinking about, you know, how to really implement the modding side of things before it's really, you know, before we're there, I guess. Uh, we have a couple of composers, but sound engineers? I don't know about that. Uh, we'll have to wait until Acuris comes back. And, uh, yeah. I know that Ace has made a lot of um, sounds for the game but yeah uh, I don't really know <laughs> yeah Mike I guess the reason you're asking, C-Joke, is, you know, <laughs> you're a musician, so, <laughs> yeah. I think the only sound we have implemented in the game is in the tactical, we have just a random music, we, you know, I don't know if that's... I don't think that's music we're going to use, or if it is, you know, I don't really know. And we have the, if you listen closely, when I press the accept button about now, your little click. Okay, back. <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah. So how's it going? Uh, it's going good. I'm trying uh, to find out why stuff isn't working. But, you know, the usual. Well, the stars are there? Yes, they're there, but that's because I hard-coded a couple of values just to get it started. So that's cool. It doesn't want to... <sighs> hmm... Okay, I think I'm gonna have to do this kind of a hard or no.
Uh, I don't know. Let me see. Yes, Philip Aron in the. I think he's in the stream. Yeah, he is. He's playing Hotline Miami. Or Miami, rather. Hmm, I don't remember that. Maybe he did. Uh, what? What? Oh, ah. Uh. Yeah, I'm stupid. When I was accessing the JSON tables, I forgot to add a key. <sighs> oh well. Oh no, that's actually the wrong way around. Hey, Acuris. Yes, I'm being terrible. Sorry. No, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> I am happy to report that stuff can now be loaded via JSON tables. Yeah, JSON for the win. Woo. It looks good, too. Okay. Well, cool. now we just need to fiddle with the others. Yeah, I'll fix the um, argument out of range exception. And I'll do a push. By the way, it's great to see that some of you guys are trying to get involved in the project. It's just awesome. So you're going to see there's just support. and You were so early in the game, and yet people want to help, and that's just awesome. Oh, lol. I just remembered. Oh, my Steam account is actually my father's old Steam account. I just kind of took it, and now I have too many games on it to give it back. <laughs> <laughs> it's mine now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> when I got it, it had like I think it had Counter Strike, Counter Strike, and like Half Life Two. <laughs> okay, now for the exception thing. Yeah, that's what we need. If anybody on here knows anyone that can do 3D modeling or 2D art, art is our big thing right now. Um, that's what we need. Please send them to us. Like, we really need artists. We have two great artists right now, but they are pulling a huge load with as many art pieces as we have and, you know, 
even you know, I mean, we yeah, we have so much art that we want to do that we we're not even doing because we're not even sure we can do all the art that we want to do right now. Um, so, yeah, we need lots of art. So, <laughs> no one knows anything. Oh, by the way, actually, is it Darth? Yes. Havacom. Okay. Cool. Yes. Yep. He's contacting you. Yep. So I told him you probably could talk with him. I think you said tomorrow. So yeah. Told him that you're on, you're on Norway time. So, Norway. <laughs> so, what time zone is he? Is he minus six or nine for me? You know, I don't know. I'm trying to remember. He said he said what times he'd like to work, but I forget what time zone he said he was in. Uh, oh. But I I'm pretty sure he's in the states. So yeah, you figure is. at the yeah, minimum, is. it's gonna be plus three for me. You know? Minus seven. Okay, that's cool. So he's one hour ahead of you. Okay. No, two hours ahead of me. No, because you're. Or wait, are you talking about GMT? I thought you okay because you and Vu keep getting time zones like because is it Vu ahead of you in time zone or behind no. or the same as you in time zone? Me and Vu should be the same. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we are the same. So yeah, he's one ahead of me because you guys keep saying sometimes I keep hearing like nine hours ahead and it's like yeah, really okay. That's because we're GMT plus one and you're GMT minus eight. Oh. Yeah, that should be right. But yeah, Mike. Said. I still say we should get you here in America and make you code in my basement. <laughs> I still says it all needs to lead to in the end. Wait, don't that need like a green card or something to like work in the states? Ah, if you're in the basement, jeez. <laughs> Just lock me down there. Just. <laughs> yeah, jeez, like, man. Yeah, no one likes. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, you'd just be a legal immigrant. You'd be fine. No one's gonna know you're in my basement. Jeez. <laughs> and then they do like, a we'll... dance, yeah? do like to see if you have like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be fine. Not worried about it. As long yeah. as you like power, we'll throw food down there every once in a while. He'd be good. <laughs> yeah. Just send. You'll have. You'll have. You'll have some faster in internet connection. Yeah. Yeah. You'll have fast internet, I and mean, what more do you want? Jeez, you'll have power, <laughs> internet, and, and the occasional food. Jeez. Yeah. Be good to go. Oh, what? I didn't know that. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Lol. <laughs> I feel retarded. Oh, well. That would be so racist. Like, seriously. <laughs> but on the other hand, I guess that's kind of true. Like, deep down, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um... So what are you working on right now? Are you just trying to adjust the other galaxies? Mm, no, I'm trying to find the argument out of range exception. Oh, I, th I thought you had it working. Oh, yeah, I see. Yep, you have your, your, your three fun errors. Mm. Or two fun errors. The other two are just stupid pro flare. Yeah, the pro flares are always doing stuff, I guess. Okay. Uh... Yeah, seriously, I think our advertisement and my countdown clock, like, it helped us quite, yeah, it helps.
Oh, we just broke another record. It looks like. Or no, oh, never mind. I only got 19. Yeah, it's it's Where's on my dashboard. It says 20, but maybe that's with me. Oh, yes. come on. Oh, never mind. It dropped down to 19. Dang it. Getting too quiet here. We gotta talk more. Yeah, ask questions, people. Yeah. yeah, people, ask us questions. Gotta have questions. Or else we'll just get that awkward silence. Yeah. Or I can turn on some terrible music. <laughs> that oh. can happen. Well, good question. Um, two good questions. See, that's what we need to do. The threat of crappy music is what it takes. To to Remember that next time. Yeah, crappy I will. music. I will. Um, so, yes, um, you can, in a sense, kamikaze. You can't ram ships. We won't have anything like that. We potentially could, but we're not there yet. However, um, with the... In game, you can use self destruct. It'll be an option that you can hit. And I think in the image Ace posted earlier, um, you can see that in the GUI there's a self destruct. And essentially, it creates a shock wave that will damage the other ship. So let's say your ship is like on its last leg and it can't make another turn. You're like, oh, self destruct, blow it up in front of everyone, and they'll take tons of damage I on the size of the ship. Um, and then as for. What are we going to do for a Kickstarter demo? Well, you're watching part of it right now, which is going to be the Galaxy generation. So um, you'll be able to pretty much go through, see the galaxies being generated. You can go through and click on, like, planets, look into individual star systems, all that stuff. And then the second part of it is going to be uh, tactical. Is my audio cutting out? Uh, it could have just been me just whispering into the microphone because I fixed ah, okay. the bug. I was just being retarded. Go on. Ah, okay. Um, but then the other part of it is it'll be the tactical. So we'll have like a skirmish mode that you can go into that you can, um, go in and just essentially have a fight and see how the tactical system works. Um, and we chose these two things because we wanted to show the player kind of essentially this is what makes our game very different. Because a lot of games are using real time and combat. Our game is turn based. We wanted to set things aside there. Additionally, it's, it's going to have really good looking ships. So, graphics wise, you can see the quality of work that we're going to be putting out for you. Um, and then with the Galaxy Generation, again, you know, Tuxnet's been working on this since like July. And this has been an incredibly complex project. So, I guess for us, that's almost like a reinsurance card to show you. Yes, um, 
we can make something and we can make it work and it's kind of the basic premise too for the rest of the game like you're an interact with the galaxy menu constantly um and i think the other big thing too is is that i think it'll show players just how different our game is uh, compared to games like star drive that are out there because they're they're you know a lot of games like uh, galactic civ 2 uh, their galaxy map is a lot different ours is very close to master of ryan 2 um, so we're hoping that a lot of you uh, enjoyed Master of Ryan 2 or enjoy the concepts uh, of it. So you'll kind of be impressed by seeing how close we are to it. Uh, prepare for a GitHub push, by the way. You mean a push? Uh, in about uh, 20 seconds or so. Sweet. Oh man, what a pro! So I just used the the uh, the GitHub program. That's how scrub I am. I oh yeah, bother, I like, I'd to love to use it, but use, Windows 8 won't allow me. Like, uh, yeah. Oh really? Yeah, it doesn't want to work. Like, you know the period where I couldn't like do anything on GitHub. I couldn't push or anything. I was forced to use the Mac. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, that's basically just Windows 8 screwing with me. It took me two reinstalls and a miracle, almost, <laughs> to find the source. Oh, well, okay, uh, oh, Ace has done some pushes, I need to pull. Please don't fuck me up. He has, yes, he has. It's just for the human cruiser, though. That's, it's just, that's all it is. Okay. Oh yeah, by the way, Morvalin, I've heard about Elite Dangerous. I love it. <laughs> I've I bought it a couple of weeks ago. I just, you know, generally like it, I guess. Oh That's the one I was talking about earlier with the ridiculous system request. That's the game. That's the one that um oh, I need I'm, I'm on the site right now, I just need to pull it up. Like, you should see the requirements on that game. It's just absurd. Yeah, computer requirements. Minimum recommended hardware specifications. DirectX 11, that's fine. Quad-core CPU. 4 times 2 gigahertz is a reasonable minimum. That's what it says. Four? What? How much? 2 gigabytes of system RAM. More is always better. It's quad-core CPU. So it wants... It says in the uh, brackets... Uh, four times two gigahertz is a reasonable minimum. <laughs> oh, okay. So it's an incredibly <laughs> CPU intensive oh. game. It looks pretty though. Yeah, very pretty. Yeah. No, no, Mike, go on. It's no, it's cool. We like answering stuff. Yeah, it's no problem. Yeah, please ask questions. Yeah, like we're begging you. Ask questions. Like this is your time to talk with us, and you know, give us input. Give us, give us your input. Got questions? Whatever, man. Just talk with us. We love it. Um. No, so the uh, with Mercurial Mike's question, no, the game won't be that feature specific. Like in, in terms of scale, um, 
you want to think about just like grand scale of the game. So, um, you know, the smallest thing that you're ever going to be worrying about is either one million colonists 